Welcome back. We want to show you this live camera location we found in Manhattan because it perfectly shows a tale of two cities. As we pan to the right, look at where the lights just stop. And that happened at the height of the storm. A power substation blew. A lot of other things happened. And the lights went out. And it left us with lower Manhattan with no lights and Midtown and the upper reaches of the city where it feels like a Thursday night in New York. And walking from one of those worlds to the other is truly like going to another world, as Harry Smith reports for us tonight. The sweet sound of success. On Manhattan's East 11th Street between avenues B and C, progress is measured one generator at a time. Celebration for generator working! <laughs> Restaurant owner Maristella Innocenti is the block's unofficial mayor, on duty day and night. I've been through a lot of these storms before, and it seems to me, almost every one, those who help themselves are the ones who get out of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching you. You were pretty much trying to help yourself all day that's, today. That's the only way. That's the only way because if I have to tell you that I had other options, no, I didn't. This one block in the city's East Village is a microcosm of New York, a melting pot of income, education, and ethnicity. On Monday night, all felt Sandy's wrath. First came the water, then an explosion two blocks away at Con Ed rocked the neighborhood, leaving flooded basements and a huge mess to clean up. We found one woman cleaning out her waterlogged storage space by flashlight. Have you had moments in the last couple of days where the stress was just? I've had a headache for about three days, so yeah, it's just kind of present. <laughs> Edwin Cruz brought an RV into the neighborhood and has strung power strips onto the sidewalk, an act so simple, it's downright heroic. I'm 31 and all I want to do is speak to my mom. Again. <laughs> I haven't spoken to her in two days, so it means a lot to get it charged. Down the block, a street preacher sings and plays songs of faith. Here on East 11th, people have begun to believe in each other. New Yorkers are by nature a fairly resilient lot. Every day here presents its own challenges. And in this crisis, that can-do spirit is a necessity. Reuben Mesa Henderson already has his restaurant cleaned up and ready for customers. This is our little bar. The only thing missing, electricity. Last year we have Irene, and then we, we overcame. And this year is a little harder. We're going to be better after this, I'm telling you. Yeah, we're going to be better. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Longtime resident Squeeze Leonard is doing her best to salvage the ruins of her flooded apartment. Excuse me. Thank you. She and her boys are getting the job done, but it sure would be nice to have a little help. Have you heard any response from the government, from FEMA, from uh, anybody? Nobody's come to my door. Um, hey, FEMA, come on down. Knock on my door. At nighttime, 11th Street has a different feel. It's a little eerie being in the blackout zone, especially when you look at the sky. We're in the section of the city that has no power, but there's so much light in the part of the city that does have power, it reflects up into the sky, and there's more light in the sky than there is on the street. So this is what it's like. So this is what it's like. Melissa Schertz is a <laughs> nanny who lives in a six-floor so. walk-up. She's spending her nights reading by candle and flashlight curled up with her dog, Duchess. Do you feel safe? I feel extremely safe. My neighbors, who I barely spoke to before this happened, we all have an open-door policy now. A relative newcomer to New York, she didn't love this city until the storm came. My neighbors have been wonderful, and I've, you know, we've barely even met before. And it's just like, it's true. In times of crisis, people come together. So it's been great. I go to sleep with my door open. As the days turn into nights, goodwill and good humor have been an almost sufficient substitute for electricity. But even Maristella is starting to run out of power. Are you starting to get a little frustrated? I'm very frustrated, very frustrated. No help from anybody. Only my husband and I and a few uh, friends and, and guys that work with us 
willing to help us. That's it. You know, that's the only thing. All right. But one place did get help from a heretofore unknown U.S. entity. Wednesday afternoon, we watched the cleanup efforts at a neighborhood haunt called Evelyn's. <laughs> Incredibly, they opened in time for Halloween. In particular, we had help from the United States Bartenders Guild, the New York chapter. Hang on a minute. Yeah. Not the United States Marine Corps. No. Not the United States anything. <laughs> the United States what? The Bartenders Guild. Yeah, the New York chapter. And it's just nice to even have business on a night like this. Harry Smith is with us from high above uh, Manhattan. And Harry, it does strike me, it takes a little bit of the thrill out of the upgrade from the iPhone 4S to the 5. Without a charge, it makes a really good <laughs> skipping rock down your flooded uh, city street, doesn't it? And oh, by the way, the service down there where there is no power because the repeaters can't, can't be charged is really crummy, too. So there's a lot of people trying to figure out just how to get along. I would say this, Brian, there's a certain reservoir of goodwill, and it's being spent day by day by day. And quite honestly, it's starting to go a little bit low. Yeah, we sure are sensing uh, that part of it. As I said earlier, the kind of mechanism of a civilized society has stopped running for a lot of people. Harry, thank you for chronicling life in lower Manhattan uh, on a fourth straight dark night. Yes, sir? Yeah, I just need to get a shout out here where we have the haves and the have nots. Where the haves, we need to thank the rare bar and grill for this eerie perch tonight. Okay, and the Yankees owe you some thanks after a uh, less than illustrious postseason uh, for showing the colors nonetheless tonight. Harry Smith in Lower Manhattan. Uh, a bit later on, the people you meet on the streets of New York during a crisis and what this particular couple was up to.